Hey guys, what's up? Shekhar Suman here from Biotechnica and welcome to the golden era. We are living in a world which is full of opportunities, but we need to have the eyes to see through it. In today's video, we are going to talk about PhD in the United States of America. Yes, you heard me right. The Mecca, the capital of biotech industry in the world. Today, we are going to talk about how to get into PhD, what is the entire process, and I'm going to break it up in a very structured format for you so that it is easily understandable and you can take away a lot of information. So quickly, we should get started, shall we? All right, let's get start. 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 So we will start today with a mind map, which starts with first question, why should you watch this video? Now there are numerous videos on the internet where you will get a lot of information, but it is not structured. But when the information is not structured, it is very difficult to understand. It is very difficult to take away and conclude. So I am trying to give you all the information in a much lucid manner, in a structured manner. As you can see, first we'll start with the planning phase. So what are we looking at the planning phase? Now, the first point, you need to have clarity of thoughts. You need to know why you want to go. Why can't you just be in India? If you want to go to USA, what are the pitfalls? What are the challenges? What, what is expectation, your expectation, your parents' expectation, your, you know, um, career aspirations? Think clearly. Once you have clarity of thoughts, then while you're studying masters, make sure that you have good marks. Okay. Now, while you're studying masters, that time only, if you decide what you want to go abroad for PhD, that's a good idea. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Publish papers. Now, you cannot publish papers unless you do some research. So, do some research. Do quality research in India in some lab as a project assistant, research assistant, or a JRF, SRF, whatever possible, and then publish papers. Okay. Side by side, prepare for your GRE or TOEFL or ILTS, whatever is your dream university's requirement, you have to you know, prepare for that. Now, if you can qualify CSINET or GATE, that's a great add-on because it really, really helps you in getting selected. Gain experience in research. Now, what kind of experience? Two types of experience, gain experience in research and gain experience in teaching. At times, this also helps and especially when you will be going for your, you know, postdoc. So after your master's, if you gain some teaching experience or research experience, it's going to be very, very helpful. Okay, so that's the point. Now, make a list of labs where you want to apply, make a list of universities where you want to apply and, you know, go through them. Which ones, are, you know, create a planetary list, which ones will, you know, will match your GRE score and then start applying. Now, letter of recommendation from renowned professors and your prospective employer, you know, current employer is very important because if they will give you a letter of recommendation, which you will send across to your, you know, um, university professor or HOD, prospective uh, university professor or HOD, they, it gives a very good, uh, you know, uh, impression. Now, you look at this uh, if you just send from some unknown professor, it's not going to help. Those professors should themselves have some experience. Um, they should have published paper. They sh if they have a patent, wonderful. And especially employer, if you're working in a company, if your employer or a manager gives you a letter of recommendation, that's great. Now, generally, the letter of recommendation is like you have to ask them to go to a particular university website and fill it. Okay. And universities have deadlines. So make sure that they fill it before the deadline. And for that, you have to really have a very good relationship with your professors and your employers. Then only they will recommend you. Right. And then only they will do the hard work for you, all the heavy lifting, going to eight or ten universities and you know, um, copy pasting your letter of recommendation, right? So that's something you should know. Arrange for renowned professor letter of recommendation as well as from your employer. Now, next is statement of purpose. Whenever you're applying, you need to have a very, very strong statement of purpose. Just don't write, I have done this, this, this. No, it's not, it's of no use. What can you contribute? What you have done? What kind of experience you have and how it will, uh, you know, help you in your future research in that particular university, in that particular, you know, domain, say CRISPR or say cancer research or say, um, you know, uh, 
any no2 research some, something so you need to show that whatever you've done till date how it will you know contribute to the future research so that's where so this is the planning phase and as it is said planning is very crucial without planning you should not jump in because you're going in there for five seven ten years or maybe forever right next the question is how to apply now very important thing you have to email to the lab heads or the university uh, professors but please don't spam them please do not send email to every professor in the same department one professor of each department of a university is more than enough and please send it from your official email id don't send from a generic email id some universities have a uh, strict rule the G generic gmail id emails may land in spam so that is a case so if in case you have a, a university email id if, if you apply from there that that will be a great idea okay so that's uh, one tip i can give you next is when you are applying you will get a lot of uh, you know uh, once you apply that time you have to show how much exposure you already have in research here you need to have a very strong statement of purpose and in your email you have to prove why your research interest aligns with the research which is going on in the university and also showcase your skill set which is the applied science knowledge which you have which you have acquired during your work in the lab in india so that's about how to apply now that obviously is a part of planning phase itself and uh, now coming to where to apply very important question so obviously there are universities labs and through consultants in india also you can apply now the list of universities you can google it out you'll get it otherwise uh, i'll put it down in the description you can check that out top 10 biotech universities in the world i have made a separate video for that you can check that out as well now one very important and simple thing please don't apply to every university and start getting frustrated check the university where your research is going on and for that, you need to know what kind of research you want to do in future. And if the research work is going on there, then only apply and see that if those skill set you have already. Because if you don't have, suppose you are applying for a CRISPR research and that you don't, yourself don't have any technical applied knowledge of CRISPR, you're not going to get selected. And that's what you have to keep in mind. Now, how to prepare for interview? There are multiple tutorials on YouTube as well as Google, which will help you. You can also opt for mock interviews at Biotechnica that will definitely help you. And because these are connected by professors and uh, scientists from abroad who are you know, involved in the recruitment process themselves. So yeah, how to prepare for interview? That's one way you can go for mock interviews at Biotechnica. The next is scholarship. So whenever you're applying, you have to remember, please don't go in with a bank loan. That's a very bad idea. Instead, you know, apply for a scholarship. And generally, the scholarship depends on what kind of GRE TOEFL scores you have. So once you have the scholarship, it ranges from 1,500 uh, US dollars to 2,500 US dollars. Some part will get deducted as taxes. Whatever you'll get in hand, from that, you will have to bear your expenses and a lot of other stuff, right? So you have to remember this, that whatever you will get as a scholarship there will get spent. You may not save anything, hardly 25 or 30,000 rupees you will, you will save. And that should actually go as an emergency funds there. So that's about the scholarship. But remember, you're going there for learning and you're not going there just to earn money right now. Later on in the future, yes, but not now. Now choose your top PhD topics wisely. So my suggestion to all the students there is you have to apply for, uh, you know, PhD in applied science. Here is a thing which you should know. Always choose a PhD topic which has a, some kind of relevance in the industry because after PhD you will do postdoc and later on you're going to obviously get absorbed in the industry whether in India or USA. So if that particular PhD topic has no scope in the industry, is that does not got any commercial value in the industry, you are not going to get, uh, you know, future help with that PhD degree. So always apply for a PhD degree in applied science which is not a you know core science it's an applied science like biotechnology or genetics or genetic engineering or you know cell biology instead of just going in like zoology botany it won't help you now coming back you should also pair pair your passion with practicality like i said always think practically speaking in future will this particular research or phd work will help me in my job in the industry if the answer is yes then only go for it and then research your research and that's the best thing you can do while you're in your, in your masters or while you're preparing for your phd abroad you know 
go to internet extensively read every possible article uh, about your topic research papers on your topic patents on your topic what exactly is happening because the more in-depth knowledge you have that will help you in the next steps which is your interviews okay so that's uh, about choosing the phd topics wisely next is how to select a university now whenever you're selecting a university look at your research is your research going on there if yes what is the journal impact factor collective journal impact factor of that particular university um, in uh, peer-reviewed journals and then what kind of funding this particular university is receiving because sometimes what happens is by the time you are in the middle of the PhD they will have to shift your lab because uh, the funding got dried up that should not happen so yeah funding are, are they having solid funding and then scholarship and insurance are they you know supporting your scholarship insurance or not and if it is yes uh, how much and will that be sufficient or not so these things you have to keep in mind and of course I have created a list of top 10 biotech universities in the world. The link is given in the description. Please check that out. That will help you. Okay. Now, having said that, like I showed you here, the scholarship uh, is very less. And that means surviving in USA is going to be a challenge. It's a difficult country. It's a costly country. So first tip which I can give you here is please share houses. Don't just go and you know start living in a mansion. Share houses with your roommates or you know, fellow Indians, share cars or use public transport. Please don't eat out. It will cost you a bomb. Stay fit because if you fall sick, it will cost you uh, very badly because the healthcare system is very costly there. And always save 10% of your income as emergency funds. That's going to be very helpful. And travel as less as possible. I have seen students have once they enroll, they'll be like, okay, let's go ballistic and start roaming around the USA. But you're PhD fellowship is not going to support that and that's where I want to you know give you a very important tip here see you are going to USA to do your PhD okay you're not going there for enjoyment and um, yes you must enjoy you must you know relax yourself but the Americans who are going to employ you there are not viewing you as a uh, you know somebody who will just go there and to enjoy they are trying to suck work out of you okay and that's why they are giving you money it's not that they will just do charity right so if they are giving you money they want valuable work out of you and you have to keep this in your mind and then accordingly you have to you know work there if you start uh, thinking that okay going there is going to be fun it's not really fun there will be long hours just like how it is in india and there will be uh, targets, there will be, uh, you know, paper publishing stress, all that will be there, okay? It's not that, uh, you know, the life is going to be rosy. But yes, the exposure, the experience, the uh, work which you will do will be highly valuable. That will definitely reflect in your future. So it's basically your PhD in USA is an investment of the future. It's not uh, in return of investment okay so that's something which you have to keep in mind now coming to the next part which is some students will ask me sir why do i really need to you know go to usa why can't we do the same thing in india yes you can do that so there are some at par institutes in india which you know as you know um, you even if you don't go to us you can if you do your research in iits iasc's csir labs dst labs and applied sciences research labs that's also at par and in fact after phd also you can go for your postdoc there so it's not that if you do your phd here you cannot go to usa ever you can always go there but your phd if it is from iit iic csir labs dc labs applied sciences research then it is going to help you so here is a point which i made earlier if in case you have a csir net qualification it's definitely gonna help you and that will help you in your PhD in India as well as abroad. So that's a win-win situation. Okay, now coming to the jobs part, what kind of jobs you will get after your PhD? So in academia, you will get a postdoctorate or assistant professor jobs in US or India. You can always do that. In industry, you have scientists, principal scientists, applied application scientists, all sorts of things. I have already discussed about that in the previous videos. And of course, you have a chance of starting your own company or become an intrapreneur where you, you stand, you know, sit at a high level position in um, big pharma companies as well. So this is all about a PhD in USA. I hope I was able to give you information in a clear cut manner, in a structured manner and um, in a lucid manner. However, I know I'm not perfect. 
you will have questions so please put them down in the comment section at biotechnica we firmly believe that science is the art of asking questions to agar aapne question nahi pucha if you didn't ask me questions then i think i didn't explain well so go ahead ask me questions about your phd in usa i'll try my best to answer them as soon as possible at the same time stay subscribed because biotechnica is where the biotech universe begins thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one till then please take care bye bye